On this channel, we have seen incredible HDMI mods for some of my favorite retro consoles. Both the Sega Dreamcast and Sony's original PlayStation got the all-digital HD treatment, and now it's Nintendo's time to shine. The N64 Digital is the first product offering by a company called Pixel FX, but it's run by some familiar characters. Dan Coons and Chris2600 have joined forces with Woozle to create this new and exciting mod. But will it prove to be the ultimate HDMI mod for the N64? Let's find out. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today I am so excited to share with you an incredible mod that just came out for the Nintendo 64. This is the N64 Digital, a completely lag-free, all-digital HDMI mod that supports crisp and beautiful 1080p video output for your Nintendo 64 console. This mod comes from a company called Pixel FX, but the folks behind the mod are some familiar innovators in the retro modding arena. Both Dan Coons and Chris2600 from Black Dog Technology have added Woozle64 to their team to create Pixel FX. Those of you who are not familiar with Woozle may know of his Game Boy Advance Consolizer mod. All three of these individuals have come together to form Pixel FX, and I can't wait to see what they come up with in the future. But regardless, today we'll be looking at their inaugural mod, the N64 Digital. Much like the Dreamcast and PlayStation HDMI mods before it, the N64 Digital will bring everything we have come to love from those mods to Nintendo's 5th generation console. And if you're as excited as I am to check it out, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for plenty more weekly mod videos just like this one. Alright, so I want to start off by showing you what's included in this new kit. Then I'll demonstrate how to install it into the N64 console, discuss the key features of the mod, show you some comparison footage of the video quality, go over the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So this mod is compatible with every revision of the Nintendo 64. My particular unit is the NUS CPU-04. Newer models have a slightly different installation process than mine, so it's always best to refer to the official Pixel Effects instructions prior to installation. I'll have a link to it in the video description below. Now the first item included in this kit is the N64 Digital PCB. This is of course where all the magic happens. Here you can see the ESP32 for system management and Wi-Fi updates, as well as the powerful FPGA which is the brains of the operation. An elegant package as usual. Also included is the RCP flex cable which we'll need to solder to the Nintendo 64 CPU as well as the RGB flex cable which is completely optional but will allow your console to output RGB through the native multi-out port. You also have this foam block as well as this 3D printed spacer. The spacer is only used if you're planning to cut an opening in your shell for the HDMI port. So that's everything included in this kit. Now I'm planning to do a no-cut version of this mod. In order to do that, you'll need to purchase a 3D printed spacer and panel from LaserBear Industries. I'll have a link to their site in the video description below. So that's just about everything I'll be using for this build. And without any further ado, let's start modding this Nintendo 64. All right, to get started, you first need to remove the jumper or expansion pack installed in your console. Then, to get inside, we need to remove the six 4.5mm game bits around the perimeter. Once they're all out, you can now lift off the top shell. Now we need to remove a ton, and I mean a ton of screws. After removing all 1 million screws, you can lift out the heatsink and various RF shielding. Now remove the remaining screws scattered throughout the console.
you can now lift off the large RF shield as well as the motherboard. Now on my particular motherboard revision, I was supposed to remove capacitor C22 and a resistor R14 according to the official instructions. However, to my surprise, they were already gone. Again, be sure to consult the official Pixel Effects instructions, which has details regarding each board revision. Alright, let's go ahead and solder in the RGB flex cable. Place it onto the pins as shown, making sure the ribbon cable is oriented correctly. Go ahead and apply some flux to the area and tack it in place. Then go ahead and solder on the rest of the pins. And this is the finished result. Next, make a very light bend along the indicated line. You don't want to crease it, just a very slight bend. And now for the hardest part, soldering in the RCP flex to the CPU. First, align the ribbon cable so that it starts on the sixth pin as shown. It's the pin to the immediate right of the white dot. It is extremely important to make sure everything is aligned perfectly. Apply some flux to the area and gently, with no solder on your iron tip, tack it in place. There should be enough residual solder on the pins. After the ribbon cable has been tacked in, go ahead and tack in the remaining pins. Again, without any solder on your iron tip. Now add the smallest amount of solder to your iron and lightly apply it to the ribbon cable pads. I like to do a small swiping motion away from the pins as shown. Apply more flux and refine your solder joints as needed. And this is what it should look like. Next, pre-tin and solder a wire to the pins shown here on the PIF chip. Then solder them to their respective pads on the ribbon cable. And then do the same for the last wire shown here. Now, depending on the revision motherboard you have, your solder points to the PIF chip may differ from mine. So again, please reference the official Pixel Effects installation instructions. And this is the final result. Go ahead and again slightly bend the ribbon cable along the white line as shown. Pre-tin the 5 volt leg of the component shown here. Then solder the narrow flex arm of the ribbon cable to that leg. Now, since I'll be doing the no-cut version of this mod, you need to cut the foam block in half as shown. If you're doing the normal install, you can just leave the foam block as is. Adhere the foam block so that it covers the RGB flex cable pins. I added another small piece here to cover the remaining pins. Now prep the lower shell by installing the no-cut bracket. Remember, do not reuse the bottom RF shield for either the regular or no-cut version of this mod. Before placing the N64 digital PCB into the shell, gently open the FFC connector tabs so it'll be easier to install the ribbon cables later on. Now, gently insert the RCP flex cable into the connector as shown, and then lock it in. Then do the same for the RGB flex cable, which can be a little tricky due to the tight space. And here's how everything should look. 
Now we need to test everything before reassembly. So to do that, go ahead and insert your jumper or expansion pack and a game of your choice. Before powering on, make sure there is no short between 3.3 volts and ground using the points shown here and your voltmeter. If everything is good, plug in a power supply, a controller, and power the console on. Check for video and sound, as well as opening the OSD menu. Make sure to not leave the console on for more than 30 seconds. Because we don't have the heatsink attached, you can cause irreparable damage to the console. Great. Mine checked out just fine, so let's move on to the next step. Add a small amount of Kapton tape to this area of the top RF shield to prevent any potential shorts with our ribbon cable. I also added a piece to the ribbon cable covering the solder points just for good measure. Then go ahead and install the custom laser bear rear panel for the no-cut mod as shown. Reinstall the top RF shield, making sure the RCP cable is properly routed through and not being pinched. And then watch as I painstakingly fasten the seemingly infinite amount of screws Nintendo decided to use here. Once it's put back together, be sure to reinstall your jumper pack. Insert a game, and marvel at your hard work. As expected, this is certainly one of the best mods, if not the best, one can do for the Nintendo 64 today. Having the ability to simply plug in your console into any HD television is so awesome. But with that said, this was certainly a challenging project. As with these types of mods, if you're unsure of your soldering abilities, I highly recommend you seek the help of an experienced modder. Alright, now before we get into the video quality comparison footage that I'll show you later in the video, let me give you a quick rundown of some of the N64 Digital's features. Now in order to dive into these features though, we first need to open up the OSD, or on-screen display. To do this, simply press the L and R trigger, as well as right on the D-pad, and the right C button all at the same time. Once open, we are presented with a slew of options. The first one is Scalar. Here you can adjust the zoom to fit your preferences. I like keeping it at 4.5 as this seems to fit the entire screen. You can also adjust Aspect Ratio. I like keeping it at 4x3, but I think there are some games that do support 16x9 so you can adjust that setting here as well. Going back to the main menu, let's take a look at Output Resolution. Here you can see that it supports resolutions ranging from VGA 640x480 all the way up to 1200p. I like keeping it at 1080p since I don't have any televisions that go beyond that resolution. Next, let's take a look at post-processing. I'm not really going to alter any of these settings, but it looks as though that you can adjust deblur, scan lines, and also crop the image, which is pretty neat and something that I haven't yet seen on these types of mods before. Moving on to advanced video settings, here you can select different de-interlacing modes for interlaced games amongst other setting options. The last area I want to go over is the system menu. Here you can access the Wi-Fi settings, which in my opinion is one of the main selling points of this mod. Just like the other HDMI mods from Black Dog Technology, you can update the firmware over the air, which is just so cool. And the last thing I'll discuss is the debug self-test option. This is a great tool to check to make sure your mod was done successfully. Having a heart next to each data line means you have successfully completed the mod. For a more in-depth look at all the features this mod has to offer, be sure you're subscribed to Retro RGB. He'll have a very detailed look at all the features of the N64 Digital in the very near future. I'll have a link to his channel in the description below. Now let's see some of the side-by-side -side footage of the Nintendo 64's standard composite compared to the HDMI output of the N64 Digital. I'll quickly show you some of my favorite titles.
Great, so now that you have an idea of the image quality that this mod can produce, let's quickly go over some of the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, first and foremost, the quality of the output is incredible. The amount of additional features packed into this mod is just astonishing. Having the ability to update the firmware via Wi-Fi allows for this mod to continue to improve as time goes on, much like the other HDMI mods from Black Dog Technology. This is a really awesome feature that will generate value for this mod moving into the future as they incorporate more features and fix bugs. And also, being able to easily plug this console into an HD television is, in my opinion, one of my favorite things about this mod. It is incredibly convenient, and I love being able to play my retro consoles on my modern setup. It's fantastic. I also really like the fact that there is an option to do a no-cut version of this mod for those who want to preserve the integrity of their original shell. I'm so glad that LaserBear Industries was able to develop a product for this purpose. Now let's quickly go over the cons. Now an obvious one is that this is a very difficult mod. If you are unsure of your soldering ability, you may want to consider a professional modder listed on the Pixel FX product page. The pins on the IC are a very fine pitch which does make this mod quite difficult. And the last con, in my opinion, is cost. These kits are pretty pricey, coming in at around $175. That is certainly not cheap. However, given the large set of features, customer support, and the future product firmware updates, I do believe that this is a fair price. Regardless, I have to say that I am so impressed by the work from the folks over at Pixel FX. Installing the N64 Digital has certainly renewed this retro console. So there you have it, the N64 Digital from Pixel FX, an amazing HDMI mod for the Nintendo 64. As always, I'm curious about what you all think. Will any of you be installing this kit into your Nintendo 64? Definitely let me know by leaving a comment down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, See you next time.